Yes, now a question about Oumuamua. Uh, when Oumuamua visited us in, uh, in 2017, no? uh, uh, it was detected too late while the object was already moving away uh, from us. No? So there was very little time to study it. But do you think you have handled enough data about Oumuamua to safely say that it is not a simple rock from another solar system, but rather the remains of a ship built in a, by an intelligent civilization? Well, at the moment, we, we don't have good enough data because, as you said, everyone assumed that it must be a rock, but then it sh started showing anomalies. It didn't look familiar. And, uh, for example, it had a very unusual shape. It was at least uh, five to ten times longer than it is wide, projected on the sky, and the best fit to the shape was that of a disk, a flat object, which is not usual. It's not the kind of rocks that uh, we are familiar with. Uh, and also it was pushed away from the sun by some uh, non-gravitational force, and it wasn't clear what could give it that push, given that there was no rocket effect from evaporation. Yeah. Uh, and it had some other anomalies that have to do with where it came from, that we bumped into it, the solar system bumped into it. It was at rest in the frame of the Milky Way galaxy. And uh, there were all kinds of uh, unusual facts about it, but we didn't collect enough data to try and explain those anomalies. And over the past uh, six years or five years since it was discovered, uh, various astronomers try to explain it as a natural object, but all the explanations are of a rock from a type that we've never seen before, like a nitrogen iceberg, a hydrogen iceberg, or a dust bunny, a collection of dust particles. Uh, and those explanations have problems. They are not simple. And there are papers in the literature trying to suggest alternatives. I think uh, one definitely needs to leave on the table the possibility of an artificial origin because uh, one possible explanation is that it was pushed by reflecting sunlight and had to be very thin. And in fact, there was another object three years later discovered by the same telescope in Hawaii and it was given the name 2020 SO and it turned out to be a rocket booster from a launch by NASA. It had thin walls made of stainless steel and it was pushed by reflecting sunlight. So that's a demonstration that what I was talking about a technological object is a possibility because we saw such an object three years later, except it was produced by NASA, by us. And therefore, uh, the question arises as to who produced Oumuamua. We cannot answer it because now it's too faint, we can't follow it, but we can find more objects like it with the Vera Rubin Observatory that will start operations in uh, 2024 in Chile, mm -hmm. and uh, we'll have much better sensitivity than the telescope PANSTARS in Hawaii that discovered Oumuamua. So I'm now working with my postdocs on a um, way to identify additional um, objects like Oumuamua and then follow up. We have the Webb telescope. If we can look at it with the Webb telescope, we can learn much more about it uh, because we can figure out the size of the object, we can figure out how much it reflects uh, sunlight, uh, given the fact that uh, uh, the Webb telescope can detect the heat emitted by the object, so it can pin down the, the surface temperature of the object and therefore its size. Okay. So altogether, we have much better tools now. And uh, my hope is that once we find another more, more like object, we can learn much more about it. But um, the meteor that uh, preceded it in 2014 uh, collided with the Earth, and therefore we can study yes. it by going to the Pacific Ocean. It's the next question. Uh, is uh, the second piece of uh, evidence that you handle is this um, metallic microspheres recovered this summer near Papua New Guinea, no? Uh, the, yeah. the area which the uh, IM1 uh, meteorite uh, fall, no? Uh, the interstellar origin from this uh, rock uh, is proven. Uh, why do you think that those remains recovered in your expedition really belong to IM1 meteorite and not to another thing? So we went to the site of the meteor that was identified by uh, US government satellites. They saw the fireball, the explosion 
when the meteor got to the lower atmosphere, about 20 kilometers over the surface of the ocean. Uh, and uh, we went there and we looked for the molten droplets that were generated when the object was exposed to the immense heat from the fireball surrounding it. Uh, and it basically, uh, that amount of energy that was a few percent of the Hiroshima atomic bomb energy uh, was sufficient to melt the surface of the object. And the uh, droplets fell down to the ocean floor. They were less than a millimeter in size. So we went to find them. And the challenge was that the depth of the ocean is about uh, two kilometers at that location. And uh, the location of the fireball was defined to within 10 kilometers, so a very big region. So we went to find millimeter sized uh, droplets out of uh, a 10 kilometer region with uh, two kilometers depth. Uh, and it sounds like an impossible mission, but we used the sled uh, that is roughly a meter in size and uh, 200 kilograms, and we uh, connected it with a cable to the ship that we hired. And the ship name was uh, Silver Star, very fitting uh, to the mission. And we dragged the sled uh, on the ocean floor and we collected magnetic particles that were attracted, they stuck to the magnets. And um, then we uh, scooped the materials from the magnets when we brought the sled on the deck of the ship. And then uh, we studied what uh, we found with a microscope. And this, we did this 26 times. So 26 times we went uh, in the region back and forth uh, to collect materials from the meteor path. And um, then when we looked at, them, at it with a microscope, we found particles that look like uh, marbles, uh, metallic marbles that are roughly millimeter, between a tenth of a millimeter to one millimeter. And they looked very different than the background, the sand uh, or volcanic ash. And uh, we found 50 of them on the ship. And then uh, when we brought them back, we found uh, 650 more of them. And so altogether we have more than uh, 700 such spherules which we started studying in the laboratory. So now we can examine the composition of those ferals, and we already did the preliminary work and it will be reported uh, in a scientific paper that uh, we hope to submit for publication at the end of August. Um, and so very soon uh, the results will be made public and we know uh, what we have, but I cannot uh, um, provide all the details, but. The, the fundamental question that we're asking first is, can we uh, test whether the material is from outside the solar system? Yeah. Um, and the, that's based on the composition of elements. And then if we demonstrate that, the second question would be, is it indicative of a technological origin? But I can already say that the number of spherules that we found, those metallic spheres, per amount of mass collected from the bottom of the ocean, that was concentrated along the meteor path. We went to some regions far away and there was not as many spherules per mass uh, retrieved uh, of background material, background sand. So uh, we already had a very good indication that there is a, an enhancement in the number of spherules along the meteor path, uh, providing a connection between the excess uh, relative to the background that we find with the meteor. But on top of that, we are studying the composition that could provide us with a completely independent test. Right. And uh, in addition to the uh, concentration and in addition to the high speed of the object, which was measured by the US government satellites, I should say the speed of the object was so high that outside the solar system, it was moving faster than 95% of all the stars in the vicinity of the sun. And uh, moreover, uh, because the object was moving fast, we could tell that it was made of material that is tougher than all the space rocks because it was able to maintain the f uh, stress from the friction with air um, to very high values. Um, and it was tougher than uh, iron meteorites even. That raised the possibility that it may be a spacecraft like Voyager that happens to collide with Earth that came from an, a distant planet where there was a technological civilization because Voyager 
would appear as a meteor that has unusual material strength and also moving faster than usual because it had some propulsion. And, and will you allow other independent teams to test the spheres um, as well? Oh, definitely. Um, you know, like any other scientific project, we are happy to share materials. And we already have four laboratories that are engaged in the analysis. One of them is at Harvard, another at UC Berkeley, uh, another one at the Brucker Corporation in Germany, and a fourth one at the University of Technology in Papua New Guinea. And of course, people can uh, independently check uh, because we have more than 700 spherules. Okay, okay. Um